when AEW first started, I probably would have thought I, I, you know, I wasn't ready for that. What up, everyone? Shaquille Mahjoudi here, and you know who this is. He is a former two-time TNT champion headlining AEW Double or Nothing on May 28th in a four-way Pillars match for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. He is to skateboards what Sting was to surfing. He is as risk-taking as I am risk-adverse. He is Darby Allen. How's it going, my man? Dude, it's beautiful. That intro was... Uh... <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting that. I was like, where's he going with this? Oh, crap. Uh, he killed you it. You know, eh, got to break the ice somehow. I know yeah. we got a lot to get to. So, you know, shout out to the beads. I think yours are probably more authentic than mine are. I don't even want to tell you how cheap these are, but. Dude, I don't even know, man. I think I got these from like a meet and greet. I don't know. Like some people just hand me stuff. And I'm wearing shout, it. Out, shout out to the fans. Always coming with gifts in hand. Um, now, Darby, before we talk about the big match we have, a double or nothing, obviously in the marquee on the posters. There is a story I wanted a little bit more insight into. Can you please like break down for me what's going through the mind of a young Darby Allen when he strolls into amateur wrestling thinking he's about to hand out ace cutters and swanton bombs and instead he sees a bunch of dudes just rolling around on the mat? Okay, so fifth grade, I remember uh, I signed up for wrestling, amateur wrestling down in Idaho because I moved from Seattle to Idaho, but then back to Seattle, but this was in Idaho. I, uh, I, I went in, I was like trying to, I was looking up like wrestling training and I was like, there's no wrestling training for like a fifth grader, like for pro wrestling. But I thought amateur wrestling was that. And then I like showed up and I was like, yo, where's the chairs? And then, like, there was, there was no chairs. And, uh, but it was, it was a good, it was a good experience because it gave me something to like sink my teeth into as a kid I had all this energy and then my first year I placed third in the state of Idaho and uh I just felt like uh you know I don't know it, it was really awesome I I love I loved amateur wrestling but then I found a skateboard and I quit amateur wrestling because I I like to do things at my own like my own like that I didn't like training I didn't like the coaches I, I kind of didn't like the teammates I kind of like ended up doing my own thing with my skateboard and with the skateboard you could have your own schedule so uh yeah, dude, when I picked up a skateboard in eighth grade, I uh, never let it go. Yeah, I, uh, I blasted it. But once I realized I couldn't get an ollie down in the first like two weeks, I gave up. But still enjoy it as a spectator. So I'm glad you're out there doing it. Um, we have this four pillars match in the headlining spot here. You, Jungle Boy, Jack Perry, Sammy Guevara, MJF. How does it feel to be in the headlining slot? On an under with that features an undercard with world champs like Brian Danielson, Chris Jericho, Jeff Jarrett, John Moxley, Kenny Omega, like the Christian Cage, the list goes on. Is it a little surreal to see all these guys going on before you when you're fighting for the world title? You know, at one time when AEW first started, I probably would have thought I, w I, you know, I wasn't ready for that. You know what I mean? Like I, I thought like maybe like I didn't have the confidence within me, but now dude i'm laser focused i know exactly who darby allen is and where i'm going and i am going to the main event of double or nothing so dude i don't even think about that like i don't even think about oh like all these legendary people on for me no dude i know what i'm capable of and what i'm capable of is main event in that pay-per-view i dude i i love that confidence can you sort of walk me through like how do we get here from where we started in AW? Are there any sort of moments that you can sort of highlight as when that like really helped sort of expedite this confidence within you? See, I was, it was set up so good in the very beginning to debut against Cody and have mm -hmm. that, you know, you, I, it was such an amazing debut. Um, but then, you know, when TV starts, you're kind of trying to like, find your ground with a national audience like who you connect to and everything like that and then uh you know i just started you know what really helped was my mindset outside of the ring that helped the most because you know there's only so much i could do on a you know a, a dynamite when you given like you know maybe 10 15 minutes to win people over but when i started like doing stuff outside of the ring it started giving me the confidence you know like who i was able to connect to 
outside of the ring. Like I've been hanging out with guys like Tony Hawk or Travis Pastrana and they don't, they don't watch wrestling. It's not their demographic, but they see what I do in the ring. And they're like, yo man, like I'm a fan. And then that's like my whole, like my whole goal is to connect with fans outside of the wrestling circle per se that haven't gave wrestling a chance. And once I was able to start connecting to people like that, it gave me a confidence like, dude, I'm onto something here. And that's why, uh, you know, that's why I love AEW so much is because they give me so much inside the ring, but outside of the ring too, with letting me do my shenanigans, mm. crazy sh- <laughs> you know? So uh, They're fun shenanigans. Yes. Shenanigans are good, Darby. So yeah, it gave me... Um, g- yeah, you know, that actually kind of dovetails nicely into something I was going to ask you a little bit later. But, um, you know, in my opinion, just as a spectator... AEW was so hot, and then I think through a combination of injuries, outside circumstances, roster quantity, there was like a little bit of a period where I felt like storylines weren't seeing their way through to the end, and the week-to-week product for me was just a little unbalanced. I feel like we're in a really good period right now where things are really like zoned in and tight, and I think Collision is only going to help. For you, how are you feeling about the direction of your character and AEW as a whole, on the cusp of another two hours of programming on Saturday nights. So I've never felt more dialed in with who Darby Allen is. I've actually, you know, in the last few months, I've been speaking from the heart about, you know, my journey on TV, you know, I've been talking from it and I feel like I've connected to a whole new group of people like fans. Uh, and a lot of people never considered me, uh, you know, a promo guy early on. But now I feel like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a promo guy. Like I like to talk because I have a message. And when I have a message, mm-hmm. you know, like that's I want to give back to people and give people the confidence to do what they, you know, wanted to do in life. And, you know, because growing up, there was not a lot of wrestlers that I could relate to. You know, it was always could relate to skateboarders or musicians. So uh, I have a message for people, you know, and that like when I have that, man, I, I could talk all day. But with um, Collision coming up, dude, I'm excited because if if it is a hard brand split where there's a dynamite and a collision, it gives people more opportunity to be seen. Mm-hmm. And I agree. That, our roster, man, like that's all you can ask for. You know, it's a loaded roster with a lot of hungry people, man. So uh, br- bring it on. It would be so fun, like to me, like and wherever they want dynamite, mean sting or mean sting on collision, you know, like. I'm down where wherever the wind takes us, man. I, I you know, I, I'm down for whatever. Like, I just want to give the people the best product we can. So, you know, seeing such a brooding Darby on TV these last few years, I'm not used to all the smiling, but I dig it. I like it a lot. Um, a couple of years ago, you said that you weren't really looking for a really long pro wrestling career. You had other interests you wanted to pursue. I was wondering, I want to do a check-in. Has that changed at all? Where we are now today on the verge of a world title, possibly. Do you still sort of have the same timeline for yourself or have things changed a bit? You know, I, I'd i like to say I have the same timeline. But like I said earlier, with the, wherever the wind takes me, mm-hmm. you know, I if I really feel like I have a message, I want to stay with it. But the moment that message dies and it feels like I become a parody of myself, myself, I'm out. I'm out. I refuse to become a parody of myself, and um, that's like that's like the the big thing is you talk about smiles with Darby. You know, it's like there's a lot I have to prove, and trust me, I still have a chip on my shoulder. There's still a lot I want to prove, and a big thing is becoming a world champion. Um, but I'm happy because. I know exactly how, like where I'm at in my life and where, like how, where I'm going and stuff like that. And, you know, it wasn't always like that. There was a lot of like, you know, you never knew like, where do I fit on this whole scale of, you know, national TV do it, you know, you know, X, Y, and Z, where do I fit in it? And now I know exactly where I fit. And that's the main event scene, baby. So. Hey, hey, all right. Last one before we finish up on some lighter stuff. Uh, you mentioned your close friend and ally Sting. I saw a news story earlier this year that uh, it's looking like this is going to be the last year for Sting as a professional wrestler. If you had it your way, what sort of role do you want to play in that impending retirement match? Tag team, 
opponents? Like, how do you want to sort of play your part in that story? I want to be a tag team. Like, that's that's what I want to do. I want to be a tag team. I don't think it will prove anything if we wrestle each other. Like, I don't think it will, you know, I think proving something is how we were a solid team from the start to the end. And that's like, I always tell people, the, be, the most important part of the story is the end. The beginning, middle, but the end is the most important. And and there's nothing I won't do to make sure that man's career ends legendary, just like the rest of it. You know, I, I refuse for that guy's career to end. Like, where people are like, oh, it was all right. Like, no, man. You've been seeing Sting jumping off balconies going oh. through. Like, man, like, he's got a chip on his shoulder. He's got a bigger chip on his shoulder than some of the young guys in the roster, you know? So people step up your game, man. Compete with it. Them. Honestly, like, one of the most shockingly impressive like late career runs in pro wrestling history i think is sting's aw run um i want to run you through a little rapid fire here as we close out get your mind semi away from wrestling for a little bit first i'm sure you've been asked this before but i don't know so i would like your top three skateboarders of all time all right top three skateboarders of all time i would say dustin dolan uh bam margera and then um probably gonna have to go with tony hawk just because i from an inspiring standpoint i can go on about skateboarders all oh. day where how they inspire me but those guys kind of like they're the ones i as a child i connected to where i was like all right so i, I love the technical street skating so i'm gonna throw rodney mullen and day one song a shout yeah. out to well, just those guys yeah they're very very flower. It, it's so crazy like with skateboarding now like they're like there's like a skater named ben cadeau like the whole like team like that, like for fa and hockey and death wish like there's so much skateboarders that are like man it's insane who has a deeper knowledge of punk rock darby allen or ruby soho <laughs> darby allen Dar <laughs> i gave her a quiz before she she fails so uh Dar darby has she given you a quiz though no because she don't know what to quiz me on because i know okay fair enough um if you could, would you rather be in the next Tony Hawk game, have a guest spot in the Jackass movie, or compete in a celebrity street league? I'd say Jackass movie. Dude, yeah. they had a ton of people in the last one, so if they ever do follow up, I think it's primed to happen. Um, shout out to the Reddit community. They always submit some interesting questions. We've seen your death-defying stunts, but what's an injury you sustained that didn't look painful on TV, but actually hurt like a mother? On TV, we're talking about TV, or or anywhere. As like as long as it doesn't look like it'd be that bad, it actually sucked. Oh man, that's hard to say. Like, uh, because everything I've done looks like it sucked. <laughs> you know, like so. I don't. I don't know, dude. I'm gonna. Have, I'm gonna have to pass on that for now. That's okay. Uh, last one, and I'll let you go because I know we're running out of time here. Um, you mentioned in an uh, article. I can't. It might have been Miami Herald. Apologies if I'm getting that wrong. Uh, where your advice to aspiring pro wrestlers was pull in stuff from your personal life, other interests that you have, because the least interesting thing about you as a pro wrestler is that you love pro wrestling. So I would like to know, Darby, and I've never actually done this before, what is one interest you wish more people would ask you about during interviews that doesn't come up enough? Uh, just like w w how I balance myself outside of when, when you know, Wednesdays are done, how I balance myself uh, in like finding, you know, that, that balance, because my life isn't just wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. I literally like when Thursdays is done, I have such a life outside of it. It's like, not even funny. Like I, I, I like to talk about what I do outside the ring. Like that's like Darby with, with the exception of this Sunday, cause I know you'd be preoccupied. Walk me through a Thursday to Tuesday in the life of Darby Allen and how you balance all that out. Uh, well, I do crazy stunts. I got like 14 acre compound here with a skate park in the backyard. And I do a lot of like trips. I, I, I travel around so much doing crazy stuff. I hang out with like my idols growing up. Like I'll, I'll hang out with a guy like Travis Strong or Tony Hawk or Rick Rubin or uh, Bam Margera. Oh, shout out to Rick Rubin. Yeah, shout out. I, I went meditating with him a couple of weeks ago. It was nice. Really? Uh, down in Malibu. Uh, yeah. So we, we talk, well, that's the big thing is like, we talked for hours about just meditation and like your brain and everything like that and finding inner peace. And that's like a big thing that like, I'm, I'm very, uh, very hyped on is just finding that inner peace with yourself because, you know, with wrestling, man, I could turn it off. I don't, I don't, you know, so, uh, I, I can find that peace within myself and hanging out with him was a very special, 
So, uh, I, I'm not at all surprised to hear that a guy with the beard of Rick Rubin is uh, very much into meditation, very on brand. I'm very excited to have learned this. Darby, next time we're going to get deep into the meditation, deep into hanging out with Bam and Tony, but unfortunately we're all out of time this time. So I want to leave you with the last word. I'll do my part very quickly. Guys, thanks so much for checking out the video. If you're still here, please subscribe, tap the bell, thumbs up. Let us know in the comment section. One, what is your official prediction for Double or Nothing's main event, the four-way pillars match with Darby Allen, MJF, Jungle Boy, and Sammy Guevara? Plus, what's your favorite Darby Allen moment? Whether it's winning a world, winning the TNT title, teaming with Sting, crazy spots. There's a lot to choose from Darby. If there's anything you want to let the people know ahead of Sunday's big show, the floor is yours, my man. Just watch the pay-per-view. Just enjoy the pay-per-view. Watch it. Watch Dynamite, watch Collision, watch Rampage, watch AEW. That's all I got to say. Final answer. <laughs>